Hi guys, um, back again with the CLK or sorry SLK three fifty uh, composite manifold swap on the M two seventy two. Last time I did go over kind of how to get it in there, how to get the old intake manifold out. Um, today I'm just going to be going over a couple of things that I ran into in getting this car back together that I think are worth noting to make it easier for you guys because this car has been. <laughs> Since that video down, I think two weeks while I waited for parts that I didn't know I needed. So I'm gonna try and uh, keep you guys from needing the same thing. So first of all, um, I was able to, as I mentioned in the other video, uh, cut the hose for the map sensor and just plug it in. Um, down here, I had mentioned that I cut the vacuum hose that goes into the secondary air pump and that I would need to replace that. So just for the sake of your knowledge, this is going to need to be about three millimeters uh, in order to fit snugly on that little vacuum uh, nipple that comes off the manifold. As for running it, not sure I'll be able to show you, but basically what I did was the, as I mentioned, the, just like over here, the vacuum hose comes down into this little silicone uh, connector that goes into the vacuum pump. Um, it's possible this vacuum hose just slides straight off of the silicone or nylon whatever it may be um, I was definitely having trouble so I figured they were integrated so ultimately what I did was I cut the vacuum hose really short right on the end of the nylon and then did a little slit up the side to get the last little bit of rubber off and then I slid this vacuum hose all the way over it as far as I could get it down to try and ensure that it would be a snug fit it felt pretty snug and then that three millimeter hooked right into the vacuum port so uh, time will tell how well that actually seals. I haven't started this yet, but um, hoping that that will keep any vacuum leaks at bay because that's nice and snug on there now. Um, otherwise, I had mentioned that you need the CLK 550 throttle body. Uh, I do have that now. Uh, it's a junkyard part. Hopefully that works. If not, I do have a new one sitting, but I'm hoping I can uh, get away with a slightly cheaper option since it's got like 60K on it supposedly. Um, this is actually off of an e E550, so it did fit uh, properly, it's the right size, so not specifically the CLK550 throttle body that's needed for the 82mm swap, um, just one of the throttle bodies off of the 5.5 V8 will do. And make sure you are looking at the NA5.5 on, such as the CLK550, the E550, the S550 because the AMG part will not fit, uh, presumably because most of those are accommodating forced induction. Um, moving on, the part that held me up the longest. This right here is the air deflector. So this goes essentially onto the throttle body up into your mass airflow sensor, which then goes into your intake, uh, your intake setup. So this is pretty tricky to get a hold of. Most Mercedes dealers brand new. Uh, it's gonna be special order, I found. Uh, so you can't just walk into the dealership and pick it up. Um, you can find them used, but again, you have to make sure that you're getting one from the 5.5 NA, from a CLK 550, an E550, something of that sort. Uh, I did learn the hard way that the uh, engines like the CLK55, uh, the SLK55, because presumably, again, it's forced induction. Uh, the diameter of this hole that's going on the throttle body is the incorrect size. I think it's 81 millimeters versus we know our throttle body. The throttle body itself is 82 millimeters, so it's basically the mouth that you're trying to slide into this is exactly the same size. So it doesn't fit. Um, this, I'm going to show the part number just so you can... Uh, avoid some of the issues that I had. So 273-140-0118-004. Oh, the, the last three are unnecessary, so you're just looking at those guys. Um, the main thing is that prefix 273, I believe. Um, off the top of my head, I think the one off of the 5.5 force induction starts with like 110, but otherwise it might even be the exact same part number. Uh, avoid those, get the right one because this car has been sidelined. Granted, it's COVID, so shipping is tough right now, but this car's been down for two weeks while I wait for this stupid thing. 
Um, as you can see, this one's also used. I do have a new gasket for it. I'll show the part number of that. Um, but uh, again, trickier to get new. Um, you can go the used route. I'm gonna clean this guy up pretty good just to make sure I'm not sucking in any garbage. Um, I had touched on how I have these sensors hanging loose that were originally for the intake manifold runner flaps on the old manifold. So uh, I did learn in most cars that's gonna throw a code. It seems like in the larger displacement M272s, some people can get away with that um, and not get a code and the car runs great. Uh, just because I'm a little nervous about it. What we did is we decided to go and because, bear with me for a minute here, I got one hand. Because uh, I don't have headers, so it's all these intake things, uh, I'm going to be doing a tune with this My Genius Dim Sport. Uh, the tune file has been provided by OE Tuning out of California. A uh, pretty well-known company for Mercedes and other Euro manufacturers. So ultimately what I did, and they were excellent in both resolving some of the issues that I had and working with me to kind of make sure the car runs as well as possible. Uh, I reached out to OE Tuning, talked to Jeremy. Uh, they were excellent. They basically sent me this dim sport that you saw. Um, I told them what I was looking for, what modifications were done to the car. Um, so they shipped out that dim sport. Uh, I essentially just plug it into the OBD2 port. You upload the stock file, which there's tons of videos on the internet explaining how to do that, uh, as well as instructions provided by OE in a uh, paper copy. So you essentially download the stock file off of the car. Uh, there's plugs included to pop it into your laptop, as well as a link provided to download software. So you download the software, update everything, your unit uh, that you use to connect to the car, as well as your software on the computer. Um, once everything's updated, you get that stock file off the ECU, plug the dim sport back into your computer, uh, and then you just upload your stock tune to OE tune, the, sorry, the dim sport software. Then you take that file and email it back to OE tuning, telling them what modifications you have what type of gasoline you use, etc. So in my case, I told them because we're out in here in Connecticut where we can get 93 premium, uh, I have a tune now for 93 premium octane. Um, I am having, most notably, these uh, sensors for the flaps are deleted now. Um, additional features are uh, if you have an automatic, it'll sharpen the shifts up, raise the shift points. Uh, you can raise the red line in either model. I didn't do that because this car will hopefully be seeing some track use. So I just want it to stay as reliable as possible. But uh, it also did say something about different torque limits for the traction control, which would be really cool because as we all know, the Mercedes traction control can cut in a little bit early sometimes and really just cut all power. And it's not always pleasant. So I'm eager to see how that is affected uh, the drivability of this car when you're kind of driving it a little harder, being that it is an open diff and traction control can be uh, a little bit invasive. So I might cut later to me uploading the tune file because I haven't done that yet. I wanted to try and start the car up without running the tune just to make sure everything's hooked up properly. I'm not getting any other codes besides uh, the flap sensors, which I am anticipating. Um, other than that, that's pretty much where it is. Uh, additionally, I guess just worth mentioning, we do have all the intake plumbing apart here. I did remove the stock air filters and I'm gonna give these a good dusting and cleaning because as you can see, these were pretty bad. So getting rid of those and I'm switching to these nice uh, K&N drop-in filters that I bought from FCP Euro. Uh, so not only are those a lifetime part, obviously being a, an air filter you can clean, but should I ever want to swap them out way down the road, FCP Euro has the lifetime warranty. So I can buy another set, send those ones back, and I basically just pay shipping to get a new set. So that'll be pretty nice. Um, looking forward to seeing how this car feels. And uh, I'll probably post this up on the forums again. 
just to explain how I did it because again when I was trying to do things with this car there was not a lot of information out there um, additionally I guess somewhat related for anyone wondering this car has a CLK 63 black series front sway bar H&R adjustable rear sway bar uh, adjustable coney yellow shocks front and rear and H&R lowering springs and that's it as of right now so I got a nice little bit of a uh, stance and the car drives really nicely it's basically in my mind um, a set of good tires and good brakes away from being a pretty fun little car if everything that I have just done pans out the way I want it to but yeah uh, overall my feedback is this is a really cool little mod for these cars and considering it increases reliability by deleting those uh, actuator flaps that are so prone to failing it's definitely a benefit and all said and done uh, it's definitely not as cost effective as just replacing uh, your bad manifold with a genuine replacement manifold uh, that is if you're going the tuned route I will say my tune it was on sale and I think all said and done it cost me about six hundred dollars so factor in this manifold being two hundred uh, this boot being something like 20 bucks used and the throttle body being something like, I don't know, 60 bucks. It might've been more than that. Um, the cost of a $700 factory intake manifold is definitely the more sensible option, but I'm never going to have to worry about it again. And maybe I'll see power gains. I don't know. I don't really care, but that's ultimately the report on the M272, uh, manifold swap to an SLK 350 Sport intake manifold. Enjoy it if you do it, and I'll report back with how the car drives once everything's back together and assuming uh, nothing catches fire because I don't like playing with injectors. Thanks for watching.